and it's time to look at the filter and amplifier sections. So let's get things set back to something a bit more normal. Right, so prior to the filter, which as this sort of diagram here shows, you've got the voltage control filter. Prior to that, we've got the audio mixer where you can mix the different sound sources that you want to go into the filter. And I mean, I've already been playing with the uh, levels for VCO 1 and 2, plus the switches underneath for selecting the waveform. Now, the other slider, this uh, white topped one here, um, because that relates to noise means that you can mix in noise as a sound source. And from this switch right up over here, in the middle of nowhere, you can switch between white noise and pink noise. And the pink noise sounds rather darker. Now the switch underneath this slider um, switches between noise and ring modulation. Now ring mod, um, you take two waveforms and when you ring modulate them you get the sum and the difference of the two waveforms. Ring modulation is quite a well known effect, um, it tends to give metallic sounds and they can either be sort of pitched bell like sounds or they can be sort of really quite inharmonic and very clangorous and just noisy. Um, so see what we've got at the moment with the way VCOs 1 and 2 are set up. Change the uh, frequency of one of them. And you can get some really quite thunderous basses out of uh, ring modulation. Sort of quite a harsh metallic edge to it, so you can get some some nice sounds out of ring mod. Let's change the amp envelope a bit, get something a bit more percussive. And there you've got sort of a bit more bell-like sound. Close the filter a bit, bit of resonance.
and this starts to show up some of the uh, calibration issues with my Odyssey. And you can get all sorts of um, interesting sounds out. Some sort of insect. Oi! Off! Hop it! Thank you. Don't want that crawling all over the uh, front panel of my Odyssey and dying a horrible death in one of the sliders. And yeah, you can get sort of all sorts of um, interesting sound effects out of it as well. Just using a bit of um, envelope control of the pitch of uh, VCO1 for that. And of course, all the while, you can bring up the volume of VCO1 and VCO2 as well. You don't have to just have the ring mod on its own. can be quite useful for thickening up sounds you've already got both oscillators going and um, bring up the ring mod um, it works best when you've got the oscillators set um, at different pitches so when they set the same it tends not to um, really add much the uh, ring mod but yeah you can bring that in as another another sound source into the audio mixer to um, fatten up the sounds <laughs> You can get some interesting results with ring modulation when you make use of the Odyssey's duophonic capability and play two notes at once. So I have a ring mod sound set up. And you can hear that the calibration is slightly out. So whilst the bottom C is not too bad. C an octave up's okay. You can hear a bit of beating up there. And then by the time you get to the top of the keyboard, yeah, it's not so great. Anyway, let's plough on. So if you hold down a single note, sounds like that. And then play the C an octave up as well. Two octaves up. That would probably sound better if they were in tune. If anything, it sounds worse, but then the bottom note's out of tune as well now. Anyway, yeah, so holding down a C and then playing... C's octaves above, it changes the timbre. Ooh, don't know what that was. Now 
Now let's play a G. Let's try an F. Try an E. So basically, if you play notes that are harmonics of the one that you're holding, it changes the timbre and it sounds quite pleasing. But if you play notes that are outside the harmonic series, you then start getting some really quite nasty, atonal sort of things going on. So uh, let's try that. <laughs> filter down a bit. Drop it down. So yeah, there's some slightly unexpected results possible when you use duophony with ring modulation.